We're back again with the chairman of the Texas Railroad Commission, Barry Smitherman. Commissioner, welcome back. And, Thank you, Bob. And, Great to uh, be here. You're moving forward in your, your run to be our next attorney general in the great state of Texas. I am. We're actively campaigning. Campaign's going well, and it's an exciting time to be in Texas. I wanted to talk to you about an issue that uh, we've been working on at Texas GOP Vote for quite some time now, and, and that is in regards to companies that are basically cheating the system. Uh, misclassifying employees as independent contractors when in reality they meet the rule requirements to be employees and um, this affects the uh, not only creates an unfair competitive advantage an un unlevel playing field for all businesses to work in but it, it creates uh, loss of revenue for the state of Texas uh, loss of revenue for mothers who are dependent on child support and things like that uh, Tell us a little bit about your thoughts on, on this issue and, and how we can work with the Attorney General's office to, to try to fix some of these problems. I'm glad you brought this up because every enterprise requires a set of rules that are predictable, transparent, and don't change from one party to another. As the Chairman of the Railroad Commission, we want to make sure that everybody who's in the oil and gas industry and the pipeline industry knows the rules and every participant has to comply with the rules. As you said, if one company doesn't have to meet a particular safety requirement, mm -hmm. that company can have a competitive advantage because their cost of goods sold is cheaper. Same way with electricity. When I was chairman of the PUC, we were always concerned that a company coming into the industry to sell electricity or to generate power if they did not have to comply with our rules, then they too would have a competitive advantage, which cheats out the companies that are trying to do it right. So every enterprise and every competition, that's how, why we have full rules in a football game or a basketball game, is because we want to make sure that the best company, the one that does it correctly, that does it the best, that abides by the rules, is the one that wins. Mm -hmm. So as the next Attorney General, I will be very vigilant and diligent in making sure that companies obey the rules. The AG doesn't write the rules, right. but we must enforce the rules and we must enforce it fairly. And as a side part of that, as you accurately pointed out, the state is cheated from revenues by companies that inaccurately characterize their employees. And moms that are owed child support or dads that are owed child support. Right are also cheated out of that revenue stream that they need. And this creates a real black market economy where people are basically going in there and hiding from the uh, collection efforts of, you know, in the past the Attorney General's office has been very involved in, in tracking down deadbeat parents. Right. And, and uh, it's a very important part of the agency's responsibility. So do you think that this is something that could be moved forward to create a stricter enforcement? Absolutely. Again, we don't write the rules. We'll just take the rules that they are, mm -hmm. and we will enforce them equally, and we'll enforce them very diligently. One of the things that makes America such a great place to live and work is that we are a country that follows the rule of law. Now, the president doesn't really understand this. Mm -hmm. He thinks that he can give <coughs> special companies that have done things for him special dispensation like not having to comply with Obamacare, for example, mm -hmm. or other allowances. But that leads to a third world economy where depending on who you know or what you can do, you can get special privileges. What makes our economy work the best is everybody follows the rules. And when you follow the rule, if you're the best company with the best product at the best price, you get the most business. Mm -hmm. If you cheat, you should be punished. And, and that's really, I think, what a lot of the business people, particularly here in Houston, where you know, we have a booming construction right. industry here right. in Houston, companies are trying to compete in the marketplace. Uh, they're trying to build viable career fields where, where the construction and, and manual labor markets are seen as an honorable profession where you have a career path and you have an opportunity to grow, build your family, build your business. And all that's being undercut by people that are literally cheating the system trying to save a few bucks here and, and there and I, I think we need to to crack down on that a little bit. We have a great demand in this city and across Texas for skilled labor. 
not everyone's going to be a doctor or an attorney like me, but we have an opportunity to provide a great wage, great living for people who want to be in the trades, who want to work in the oil and gas field, who want to work in the trucking field, pipeline, mm -hmm. construction, everything that goes with building something, and we need to build a lot of stuff, not just in Houston, but across our state. So as a result of that, we have to make sure we're getting talented people that see this as a career that they can build upon, make enough money to support their families. There's plenty of work. I mean, we are one of the few places in America where our economy is booming. A lot of it has to do with oil and gas, mm -hmm. which of course is what we oversee at the Railroad Commission. But we can have an opportunity where if I cheat or if I break the laws, I somehow get more business than the guy who's trying to run his company correctly. Now, speaking of the Railroad Commission, I, I heard a report this week in the news about just how huge the increase in production is in, in natural gas here in Texas, particularly down the Eagle Ford Shale area. How is it, you know, one of the things that the Attorney General has to do in the state of Texas is run a big state agency. You've done that not once but twice running state agencies. Talk about the uh, energy industry and how as running the agency that oversees that you have managed to grow that business. Well we're in Houston today and there was an article on the front page of the Houston Chronicle yesterday that talked about Texas's meteoric increase in oil and gas production and in fact the EIA, the Federal Department of Energy has estimated we're producing well in excess of two million barrels a day of crude and liquids at the Railroad Commission, we calculate a little bit differently, but let's just call it two million barrels a day. That is a more than we have done in the last couple of dozen years. In fact, you would have to go back to the early 70s to find production larger than what we have now. And at the Railroad Commission, we've tried to do our part to enable the industry to produce all this liquid and create these great paying jobs. So one of the things that we had to do was reduce the turnaround time on permits. When you come to the Railroad Commission to get a drilling permit, you need to have that permit process quickly. When I arrived there almost two and a half years ago, it was taking weeks and in some cases months to process an oil and gas drilling permit. Now we're doing it in three days. We will issue more drilling permits this year than we have since 1985. So we don't want to be the holdup. We want to make sure that we're empowering the industry to do it quickly and to do it safely. We're also doing it with less taxpayer dollars at the Railroad Commission than we did in the biennium before I got there. We are using money generated from the industry by paying fees and assessments. And so that relieves the legislature from having to appropriate us any tax dollars. Those dollars can be used for some other endeavor. And in my personal office, I've kept my budget flat. In fact, uh, we have not increased our personal expenditure in my chairmanship office of the last two years, even though some agencies, and I think even a couple of my competitors, have, have raised the amount that is being used to run their personal offices. We've held it flat. All my employees are happy to have a job, and they're happy to keep what they're making at the same level. Mm -hmm. Well, I think these are very important issues that what the voters need to, when they're considering in the primary election that's coming up in March, they need to look at all the candidates and not just some particular aspects of their record, but their entire record and, and see what the qualifications are that we're looking for an attorney general and how that candidate matches up for those particular... Well, most people don't realize that the AG's office has over 4,200 employees mm -hmm. in 96 offices around our state with a half a billion dollar a year budget. You need someone who's an experienced leader to go in and make sure we're spending our money wisely, we have the right people in the right seats. I don't think either of my competitors has ever led anything close to the size and complexity of the Railroad Commission, which is a hundred million dollar a year budget and 725 people. So when we're spending taxpayer dollars to run the AG's office, you need a leader who knows how to do it, and I'm that guy. Well, we have an example of that at the federal level. The President of the United States had never managed anything before. He'd been a legislator. He'd never managed any business of any kind. And uh, we've seen what happens when, you, when someone without that experience tries to hire executive positions and mid-level management positions, and 
the quality of decisions that it's, they make in that process. You know, Obamacare rollout has been a total disaster. I don't think the president can run mm -hmm. a lemonade stand if it were given to him. And what we've tried to do at the Railroad Commission at the PUC is to make our employees believe that our industries that we oversee could go somewhere else to get the service if they didn't come to us. Mm -hmm. Instead of thinking of ourselves as a monopoly, mm -hmm. where we have these industries captive so that we could treat them badly if we wanted to, I say treat them like a customer. If you could walk down the street and get your drilling permit from someone other than the Railroad Commission of Texas, how would you conduct your business at the Railroad Commission? And the response is improve customer satisfaction, friendliness, engaging with the industry, not always giving them exactly what they want, but moving the, the process along quickly in a very professional way, responding back quickly. And that philosophy starts at the top. It has to come from the leader who says, this is way, the way we're going to conduct this agency. Well, Chairman, I thank you for taking the time to come in and talk to thank Texas you, GOP vote again. I'd like to get back with you again on a couple of other issues, Good. and uh, we'll continue on through the campaign. Thank you.